Every day, there are more and more people living past 100. And frequently, we see YouTube videos like this or news articles like that. And I want to be able to fact check this centigenarian advice. Let's get started. Pee -woo. This is Mike Fremont. He's 101, has multiple world records running marathons, does daily pull-ups, and he's Ooh. diamond two in League of Legends. What? My guy is low! I'm joking. I mean, he's a... Uh... That'd be cool. <laughs> what do you think his diet is? Paleo, vegan, pescatarian, animal based? Is it music? What is the diet? Answer! His vegan diet is the number one key to his health. For good reason. He was diagnosed with cancer at 69, was given only three months left to live, and stumbled upon wow. the cancer prevention diet by Michio Kushi, which talks about a macrobiotic diet based on Zen Buddhism, which means no animal products with lots of anecdotal evidence, a lot of cancer survivors who swear by it, and he himself was cancer-free a few months later. I would be really careful with these types of anecdotal stories because A, when someone says you have three months to live, we don't know who made that prognosis. I've seen patients tell me stats about their health. Then when I go to investigate those stats, they turn out to be untrue. It doesn't mean the patient's lying. It's just there's a lot of a uh, game of telephone that happens in the hospital system. Doctor says one thing, radiologist says another, nurse says another, the internet says another. The patient combines all that and then creates their story. Another thing that happens. Eating a diet that's very healthy, especially one that's rich in fruits, vegetables, is gonna be the healthiest way for most people to live. To say that this is the only way is a type of inflexible thinking that's ultimately gonna lead you to an unhealthy relationship with food, therefore an unhealthy relationship with your weight, and all these things really live in a really healthy ecosystem. Our healthy weight, a healthy relationship with food, our mental health, our physical well-being, all those things need to be in harmony, and different things are gonna work differently for different people. It's just that you keep going. Wow. It's only a number, 101 is only a number. A spot of whiskey occasionally helps. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's not on the national health. Yeah, that's not something we ultimately recommend. Alcohol has had such a tumultuous history within the healthcare community. We go from one decade saying that it's prolonging life, the next decade that it's harming life. The reality is it's technically a poison, right? But it also helps with our minds. Because if we're being honest, sometimes our minds can be poison. And if you put your attention towards the minor poison that alcohol is, and it takes away the attention from sometimes how bad poisonous our minds are, could be a good trade-off. But the important part is always staying in control and not overusing it, not becoming overly reliant on it. Elizabeth Sullivan has lived in the same Fort Worth, Texas house since 1942. And she has just celebrated her 104th birthday. 104th birthday. Wow. Wow. What's it like to see a century go by and then still live some extra years? She credits at least some of her longevity to a Lone Star State favorite. No. Hey, you're drinking Dr. Pepper right now. That's gotta be the producers doing this. There's no way this old lady goes around telling people this. This stuff is good. It's got sugar in it. And three, two doctors have told me that if I drink it, I will die. But they died first. <laughs> <laughs> the mentality is amazing. Okay, so this is the perfect time to introduce survivorship bias. <laughs> okay, so that's proof that it's good for you. Yeah. That's actually not proof. Just because something has worked, it doesn't mean that it is proof. That's why we do research, including many people, randomizing people. Does it mean it's gonna prevent you guaranteed from living a long life? No, nothing can really guarantee that. Everybody tells me it has too much sugar in it, but since I've been drinking three a day for 50 or 60 years, uh, evidently my body needs sugar. I don't take any medication. They can't still find anything wrong with me. <laughs> That's amazing that she's so healthy. That makes me really happy. Now look, I don't like villainizing food. That's why when a Dr. Gundry tells me that, Dr. Mike, don't you know fructose is terrible for you? I say, pause. Fructose on its own is not terrible for you. Everything needs to be considered in its dose. So if you have sugar from fruits, it's not the same as getting sugar from a soda. It also depends how much total sugar are you ingesting, how many calories are you consuming totally? What other conditions?
conditions do you have? All those things matter. My job is to counsel on risks. And if the risks are increased, I'm gonna tell you, and it's in your choice to make that decision or not. Born in Harlem in 1912 and always proud of her Italian heritage, Louise moved to the Bronx as a young girl, happily calling the borough home ever since. Yeah. In her golden Brooklyn. year, she's danced almost daily yes. and can play bocce with yes. the best of them. She still lives alone and reveals that's been a key to less stress. I think the secret of 107, I never got married. <laughs> I think that's the secret. See, that was good because had she have gotten married into an unhappy marriage, she would have had a more difficult life. And like the bocce stuff, all of that, like it's a joke, but it's not. Because what does bocce do? Brings people together. You have social entertainment. You have connections with others. When you have social support, you handle mental health issues better. If you have a medical emergency, you're more likely to have someone check on you. These are the things that lead people to live longer and healthier lives. I'm 107, I just take the high blood pressure pill, that's all. Aging oh, wow. with Grace hasn't been without challenges. She's legally blind, recently overcame pneumonia, and at 103, survived an assault and robbery in her apartment building. Wow, who is doing that? You have to be such a bad person. Good food, no soda, no cake. All right, so she knows how to control eating the healthier foods. Good balance, good advice. My name is Richard Arvin Overton. I am a hundred and nine years old. Woo! Still walk. I still talk. And he still got swag. And I still drive. I wouldn't want to be behind him in traffic is what I'm saying, but like props. I just sit there and smoke sometimes 12 cigars a day. Oh no. And sometimes more than that. Don't do it to me. Anybody say, what you smoking for? I just, it just, it makes you feel better. I'm going to say something that I bet you're not gonna expect me to say. If this person was my patient, I wouldn't put pressure on them to stop smoking. If this person has lived this long and is happy with their choice and is not interested in making a change, why would I encourage a swap? Why would we fight over this habit and then ruin a proper healthcare relationship? I have patients that they love having a drink of scotch at night. And I know it's not great for them, but I know it's what brings them joy. If I take it away, even by saying, this is a prescription to stop doing that because it's not good for you. It's gonna take away the fun and the quality out of their life, especially when it's a limited life. Like we know once you start getting into these late stages of your years, the length of extension we can do is minimal, but the quality improvement, that's where we come in as physicians. But you, you can't inhale. Just to go ahead and just slow the cat and let her go and forget about swatting. That's a little ridiculous. We know what secondhand smoke is, right? This, these days. So like, even if you're not inhaling the cigar, the smoke is still around you. You're inhaling it. So you may not be inhaling all of it, but you're still inhaling it. And look, survivorship bias is interesting because it can lead us down a path of thinking that something is really healthy or unhealthy just because a single individual has survived thus far. It doesn't mean that we're actually getting good advice from that person. It's why there's no taste to it. it just makes you cold. I'm going to hell to wait. There is no healthy way to smoke a cigar. I'm just going to go and put that on the record. Some birthday wishes for an East Valley man. Today, he is 110 years old. Wow. Susan Casper reports the guy is sharing his secret to longevity. Oh, I can't wait to hear the secret. People ask me, uh, what do you do to stay so young? I say, well, you've heard the uh, old saying, I know you have. You are what you eat. So I'm a blueberry. <laughs> Five foods, garlic, honey, cinnamon, chocolate, and olive oil. I'm with all those foods. You've heard me talk about honey on the channel. Cinnamon is amazing. Olive oil, you've heard it during my interview with Dr. Danielle Bellardo and Dr. Gundry. Dark chocolate is great, polyphenols in there. Garlic, rock star. Fernando picked up from his father, a doctor who lived to be 98. Wow. And he told me not to eat ordinary red meat. He said, lamb is okay, but red meat, stay away from it. Hot dogs and, and the french fries and all those things. There's nothing intrinsically terrible about these processed foods. The issue that comes in with processed foods is that they're so palatable, they're so tasty, they're so chemically engineered that you could just keep eating them and you're never satiated. And yet, they're not filled with dense nutrition, good quality nutrition, minerals, vitamins, where it's actually like you're eating and at least getting something out of it. You're kind of just consuming empty calories. Fernando keeps his brain sharp by being a voracious reader. That's so good. 
crossword puzzles and playing checkers. All very healthy habits. Father set him up for success, not only with the habits, but with the genetics as well. That's something we don't talk about often. A lot of these survivors here that are living into their hundreds likely had relatives that lived into their hundreds. But the one thing that's interesting about your genetics is you can't change it, but you can change your diet, you can change your physical activity, you can change your mental health. So be happy with what you can control and then live comfortably uncomfortable with all the other things that are outside of your control. In Anna's 112 years, she was rarely sick. Yeah, but look at her. Her Scrabble game's weak. Men? Cow? Sane? Those are like at max 10, 10 point words. I would crush her in Scrabble. I'm just kidding. What's her secret? Meet friend. What Anna really means is that she attributes her long life in part to good genes, clean living, and staying active. What did she say? Clean bread? There's not a speck of dust in her house. Well, that's a great way to keep active and run into the state of flow, which is good for our mental state. But baking bread, I mean, okay, how in the world did she isolate that one single thing and give it all the credit for the success that she's had? If you do what do you see there is to be done, you get all the exercise you couldn't have. I don't want to be one of those people, but she said there's not a speck of dust. And I was looking at her stove, it looked a little dirty. I'm just saying, I'm just pointing it out. If you're gonna use clean in Scrabble as a word and then say there's no specks of dust and I see dust, I'm gonna question your health advice. Do you take vitamins? Yes, a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them. Do you need them? Different question. Did it make a difference? Vitamin it was my e? favorite, but mm -mm. no. People who took vitamin E didn't live any longer than people who didn't take vitamin E. Yeah, we know this about all vitamins. They also looked at vitamin A, C, and calcium. The short answer is none of them made a difference. None of them made a difference. Wow, thank you 60 Minutes for providing some accuracy. What about alcohol? Oh. Alcohol made a difference. It shortened life. Initially, we had the French paradox where people in the regions that drink alcohol lived longer and were like, oh my God, maybe it's because of the alcohol, maybe it's because of the cheese. But the reality is the more alcohol you consume, the more negative effects you have of it. If I have a patient that doesn't drink alcohol, I would never recommend that they drink alcohol in order to get some sort of health benefit. But if they drink and they drink in a very small amount of moderation, that might be okay as to not increase their risk sufficiently. Moderate alcohol was associated with living longer than individuals who did not consume Wait alcohol. No, come on, well, this has been disproven. This has got to be an old interview. A moderate alcohol, no. you live longer? No, this yes. has been disproven. Up to two drinks a day led to a 10 to 15% reduced risk of death compared to non-drinkers. No, because once we controlled for certain factors, like people who drank socially were generally healthier people because they were out about drinking versus people who were hospitalized had illness were not drinking. Once you controlled for all those things, you actually saw that that wasn't the case. This brings me into a really good bias, publication bias or positive result bias, where a lot of the research that's published and especially the research that gets highlighted in a lot of these news stories is research that's positive, that has created some sort of finding, a breakthrough, if you will. But we don't hear about is all of the studies that find negative results, that show things don't work. And those studies are equally as important, if not more important. We're only hearing about why this specific 100-year-old lived for so long, but all the other 100-year-olds that took vitamins that we've never heard from, we don't know what they did. Which meat temperature is optimal? Click here to find out, and as always, stay happy and healthy.